Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at yet another corner this season in DeAndre Baker. So he is the starting corner for the Georgia Bulldogs. And as we will be able to see in just a second here, uh, with his height and weight and class and everything like that, uh, he is a, let me see if I can find him again, somewhere over here I thought, uh, maybe I'm just missing him, I just clicked on this like not too long ago, um, rip this, uh, one second here while I find him again. I probably should have done this before I started recording, but. Um, oh, there he is. He was on the left side the whole time. Uh, he is a senior who is listed at 5'11, 180. Uh, I think that that's his official. That sounds about right, too. I'll just like to confirm though. Uh, yeah, 511 185 on 24 7 and the official roster. So there you go. Uh, he is from Miami, Florida. And for those of you guys who care about that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be taking a look at the two games of tape that are up for him so far in Tennessee and Oklahoma. Uh, so Oklahoma, of course, was the uh, playoff game, the semifinal. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the Tennessee game first. And hopefully this won't take too long for you guys who are looking for a shorter look. Uh, of course, we do plan on doing more of these later on throughout the year and taking looks back and things like that throughout the season periodically uh, as tape continues to come out uh, this coming season. So, go he's number 18, as you guys may have seen on that little preview thing. I believe that that is him down there. Yep. Nice sticky coverage from the get. And get targeted as well. Oh, or not. That was 24. Yep, bottom of the screen again here. Looks like he's communicating with the defense, so he does have some sort of leadership capabilities as a junior. I like the base here as well. Again, just simple slant knee bend, quick press. Mm, third and seven. I kind of want to see him do a little bit better protecting the six, but I mean, play call is play call. Oh, it's the same play. That was actually fairly decent uh, for considering it was a comeback. He's actually not going to give up a ton of space, and it looks like he almost kind of stumbled here. Like right there, there's a good frame of it. He just kind of loses his footing a little bit. Otherwise, that was pretty good for a comeback route, to be completely fair to him. Okay, yeah, he's definitely taking some sort of leadership responsibilities. We should see a lot of that as a senior as well. Let's see his own blitz. Exactly where it was. I like how he's playing tight at the line as well. I think he backs off in zone. Target. Nice tight coverage there. Good job not taking the defensive pass interference call as well. And here's a great look at it. I love how he stays square and rigs the quarterback on this particular play. You see it here. like He's clearly watching the quarterback's eyes here and, and reading this receiver as well. 
a nice part of why he was so able to get involved and in, in interfere with that pass without paying the penalty. Okay, a little physical there. Like it. Another what looks to be his own look. Again, check out the line. I like the stance here again. Slings it out. Knees bent straight. Beautiful. Come back up. Okay, recognize that quickly enough, I'd say. Nice tackle by Roquan. Cool. Off, man. Yep. Let's play by 26. Gives up outside, which is a great move because they're on that left hash here. So I like seeing him give up that outside because what this is going to allow him to do later on in the play is force that boundary and force ideally an incomplete pass. You're really reducing by, by doing this and letting him take that outside. What you're doing is you're really limiting that target window, uh, and you're forcing the quarterback, who I believe might be Quinn Dormagee, uh, to make a much, much tighter window pass uh, with a lot less room for error if he wants the completion. Stop and go. Great job of not biting too hard. I do want to see him get that head around, though, and not get that call. Uh, but that was excellent work. I mean, from the beginning of the play here. Great job of staying patient. First is the receiver out. You're going in the first two phases. Stops for the hitch just in case. But doesn't overcommit, doesn't completely turn, keeps his head toward the receiver. Realizes it's a streak, and then there's his first error, well, his only error, to be honest with you, in not getting that head around. But yet he still does a great job here of getting his hand in as the receiver gets his hand up. And that's what allows him to deflect this ball out and force the interception. Very, very nice play across the board there from Baker. And see, you see, as soon as the receiver starts to stop and he starts raising that left hand, that's when Baker gets his hand up. That's just great awareness on his part. And he definitely does a great job of poking that free as well. One thing I do like to see with cornerbacks is if they can get that hand inside and place their hand well to knock the ball away. And what he's doing here is he's kind of preventing that basket catch at the at the start. But what he's going to end up doing is you see him swat downwards, which is really nice to see because at this point he's not trying to tip the ball up. He's just trying to force the incompletion, uh, which is oftentimes the correct play. I ends up working out regardless there. Uh, And yeah, he does a great job of swatting that through the receiver's hands. That's just excellent defense from start to finish. Great patience can you force? Nice. That was a great job of staying with that tackle. Watch here what we're going to see. Oops, not far back enough. He's going to come up, he's going to be the force on this play, right? So what he's going to do is, first off, he's going to get in his position. Bam. Goes for the legs. Getting stiffed. 
So he has to fight through the contact and stay with the tackle here. And what he's going to be able to do is he's going to be able to wrap this up and bring him down by the leg. That's a nice shot of fighting through the ring back's contact. John Kelly is not an easy ring back to bring down either. Same thing here. We have to be the force. Not Kelly, but and he stays high and brings him down that way. Very nice. So he's definitely got fundamentals down. Okay, I'm a little bit over aggressive on this one. I would like to see him stay a little bit more patient here. Because you see, he's kind of. Well, I mean, I guess he's trying to force him outside too. So it kind of serves a dual purpose. Oh my, that was incredibly quick reaction here. So obviously, he's covering the guy down here closer to the first down marker. And even as that ball is thrown, like you can see, he's already coming full steam ahead, and the ball hasn't even hit the receiver yet. That's a great job of getting off your route and recognizing the play. I'm sure at that point he probably had his eye on the quarterback the whole time. Okay, playing off again, probably his own look. A lot of zone cover corners in this class this year so far. Oh, could have been a coverage stack. I oh, just ran him on a deep post. Yeah, he had no chance. Baker easily could have made that ground up. So, so far, pretty good. Had that one really nice play uh, that led to the interception as well. So. Uh, definitely uh, liking what I've seen so far. Of course, very small sample size, and Tennessee doesn't exactly have the best QB. Uh, but we'll see what we can get here from Oklahoma. Actually, one second, something real quick. For those of you guys that don't know, we don't really do whoops. Uh, we don't really do editing. For these, it's kind of nice to just keep things natural and flowing. And it, sometimes when things get edited, they almost come off as like fake, or like you're skipping things and things like that. And uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, cool. Looks like someone did take care of it. Awesome. All right. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this one is going to be versus Oklahoma. And obviously, half speed, especially for corners, because you get to see a lot more in half speed of technique and fundamental. Oh, nice. Is that a tight end that he's on? If it's not, that's a big wide receiver. My goodness. So, hopefully, we get to see a little bit more here. This clip is about six minutes long, which is nice for length. Oh, I love that stance. It's just complete slant. Beautiful L angle. Oh, gorgeous. He does such a nice job of enforcing the sideline. That's really going to help him, especially on deep balls against NFL receivers. So, I don't know if that was this guy or not. It looked like he was in the under zone anyway. So, I don't know if that would really matter much. Who's he on at the line? Yeah, it looked like a corner. It looked like a sea route just came in behind him. Yep, okay. That's a nice shot by wide receiver number five to find open space. But yeah, it looks like Baker is... Or not... Well, okay, yeah, Baker. Duh. 
Baker Mayfield, Baker Corner. Okay, Baker the Corner uh, was co over trying to make sure that Baker the QB Mayfield. I'll just call him Mayfield. Uh, didn't scramble here, and it was almost like he was you know, under like a flat. So I can't really pin that one on him. That's just a great play to beat the coverage, to be completely honest with you. At least that would be what I would see on this play. 24 should have had that, because he was in that deep zone in the end zone. I would blame that more on 24. Okay. Another deep zone play call. That was, okay, one thing I'm going to say, now that I think about it, is watch the agility and quickness. I mean, look how fast he covered that 5 to 10 yard span. Like, this is in half speed. So, the amount of time that it took him to do that, that was very, very quick. The dude is so smooth in open space. Okay, no huddle. Top of the screen. Oh, I love how he forces the sideline. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is how you went. Watch this. This is some of my favorite stuff I love to see from corners. Because this is how you win a rep on a deep ball. Without having to risk pass interference, without having to risk a catch, without having to go for a contested catch. He knows he's 5'11". I mean, you're not probably going to win jump balls versus Mike Evans in the NFL, especially on deep balls. So what he's going to do is he's going to give him outside the outside play, and he's just going to casually force him to the outside and take away his inside leverage, anything he can get. That is beautiful. Oh, I love to see that so much. Okay, block shooting here. Ooh, he went inside. That's a nice and nice job on number two to go around. Okay. Deep middle. That's nice coverage. That is excellent deep coverage. Whoops. Right there, look how tight he is. That dude's trying to come back across. That dude probably actually had the middle third. But that is excellent tight coverage. And then as soon as he realizes that that's an overthrow, he's going to get behind him and make sure that the receiver can't come across. I mean, that's... That's how you interfere with a pass without committing an interference penalty. That's just beautiful. Oh, screenplay. Okay. A bit disappointing he didn't recognize that. But, I mean, you can't win everything, I guess. It's the same thing here. He's forcing the outside. Get off the block, get off the block, get off the block. There you go. And he goes for the strip. That is not a bad play. I wish he would have gotten off sooner, but... Okay. Playing the drag route. Pursue angle. I love that he's taking that pursuit angle. He overruns it a little bit. But I love that he's considering the depth of the play here. And you can tell that like, he's going to be curving this, right? So what he's going to do is he's going to try and take this angle here and cut him off. And force him back into the middle of the defense. Now, right here, he probably, if he wanted to, could have made this tackle. 
by taking a little bit sharper angle instead of a little bit rounded. You're going to see the running back pull off a little bit of a hesitation. But ultimately, that's semi-win. I wouldn't call it a, a, a win. But he doesn't take a huge L here because that allows the other guys to make up some ground. Of course, they don't. That's terrible. That is an epic fail by the whole team. You, you, if you're force, forcing a guy back in the middle of the defense, someone needs to be able to be there in the middle of the defense. All right, red zone rep. So this is nice to see goal line reps important, especially if this is a pass play. Uh, you're looking for especially on a third and goal at halftime. You're probably estimating a fade route here, and you want to see his vertical. Okay, they're running a reverse. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, well, for one, uh, he was not on Baker. He is on 17. Oh wait, no, that's number 10. Was that 10 or was that 18? Because I don't see Baker. I can see what he was on that play. Nice job is the force on the edge, forcing him back inside. Very nice. Good positioning. Playing at the line. Okay, they had him in deep zone. Which is interesting because it's underneath on our third and three. I kind of wish he would have. Oh, what a hit. So, yeah, we're going to see him off screen right now. He's going to back up and take a deep third. I don't know why they're doing that. Unless they're trying to double cover this dude, which makes little sense because it's third and three. I blame that more on play call. Another zone look. Uh, oh, 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 dear. Yeah, he needs to be a lot more aggressive on this particular play. Because what's going to end up happening is he's just going to take almost like this hole. And it's almost like he's trying to make sure the running back doesn't cut this right. But no one has the left hole. I mean, to be fair, he kind of took away some ground, but oh, that was really poor. Not necessarily on, on Baker's part, on, on the team as a whole. Slant, second time, beautiful. Of course, there's an easy incompletion there. Oh, they're not going to start it? Okay. Uh, so let's see what we get here. Unfortunately, it's not particularly zoomed, but I will point out that he does have really tight coverage this whole play through. He is being really, really sticky. And he gets his hand up and it looks like he got his hand up and through the arms to knock that ball away. And if that was the case, which it looked like it was, uh, that is just excellent fundamental defense by Baker. He's doing a really, really good job with really basic fundamentals so far, which I like to see. You're not going to have a 
very difficult time uh, with teaching him basic corner skills at this point. So that's always really good to see. Underneath on a third and five. Great job of protecting the sticks. So one thing that you're going to want to see from corners on third downs, more often than not, I would say there's exceptions, like when they were double-teaming that guy earlier, where it's a play-calling thing. But what you're going to want to watch here is watch where Baker's line is. So the first down marker here is at the 35. So you're going to want to see him not give up this underneath route here, this drag, beyond the 35. So what he's going to allow here is he's going to allow number five, the the underneath leverage, essentially. And he's playing, just look at his line. He's literally running through the 35 to make sure that the if the wide receiver gets this catch, it's ahead of the first step, or I guess you want to call it behind at the first down marker. In front of would probably be the best way to phrase that. Oh, okay, that was pretty good recognition there. Looked like a zone play to some extent. I want to see him go a little bit lower here. There we go. He's being really physical. Oh my! That is a little bit good off of me. Boom! Just shoves him right off. Got a little bit of edginess to him. It's going to be underneath the little scoreboard thing. Let's have a look. Make the tackle or go for the strip. There you go. Go for the strip. All right. Key situation here. Forces the outside leverage. That incomplete. That is excellent, excellent work by big by corner Baker. This is an outside. This well, I was just I should just call an out route. Period. And what he's going to do is he's obviously taking away the middle of the field to make sure he gets. That is not my phone, unfortunate. All right. So anyway, just going to ignore that. Um, that is an out route basically, and what he's going to try and do here is take away uh, this portion of the, the field, the like, interior, the hash to the out-of-bounds marker. And what he's going to have to do here is when he sees this outcut, he does a great job of, of getting out as well. Uh, we noticed earlier on the comeback play that had he not slipped, he did a good job with that as well. So what this is showing me is two things. First, he's agile. He, has, he does a great job of getting... Um, uh, limiting and yeah okay first he's agile and quick and he does a great job of staying with receivers and secondly as he shows me he does a great job of reducing the gap and, and limiting space and that he can keep with cuts so what he's going to be able to do is he's going to be able to nullify uh, better route running receivers so guys like Odell Beckham uh, in particular are going to struggle versus someone like Baker because he's going to be that guy that limits separation. Uh, so I would actually really love to see tape of him versus Calvin Ridley. Uh, if I remember right, Calvin Ridley did struggle in the championship game. It would not surprise me if part of that was due to Baker limiting that separation. Uh, and here as well, he also has to get his hand in there and get that deflection and he does that. I mean, just beautiful fundamental techniques from a corner. Great job getting off the block. Nice job tripping him up.
Thirty two. I like how he's playing trail here a little bit. Because what that's going to allow him to do is get in front of the receiver. So what you're going to want to see from him here is he's allowing the receiver to get out a little bit of space in front of him. But what Baker is trying to do here is keep basically in, in phase with the receiver uh, and basically limit his ability to get too far in front. So like basically stay step in step without giving up too much ground. And he's going to do that beautifully here. His pursuit speed, recovery speed, uh, top notch. And you see by that point there that he's still right there with the receiver. That's excellent coverage. And that's actually a good situational as well. Versus the throw away. That's beautifully tight coverage. Is that on Mark Andrews? Yeah, they had him on Mark Andrews, people. Like, he's probably one of the better tight ends in last year's class. Tight ends in last year's class. Not receivers. And they put him in. I, I, was that man? They manned him up. A 5'11", under 185-pound corner on Mark Andrews, who's probably like 6'5", 240. In the red zone, on second and short. And he still does an excellent job of staying with them first. Not taking a penalty, which against a much bigger receiver than you is obviously a win in itself. And forcing incompletion. To be fair, that wasn't the best throw by Baker Mayfield. But, I mean, that is excellent red zone defense. From DeAndre. Oh, I love this stance. Look how forward he is. Targeted. Oh, man. <laughs> Round of applause. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Of course, they got him for offsides. So that's next. Oh, that sucks for him. That's a stupid penalty, especially in the red zone like that in double overtime. That is horrible. Like, I mean, look at this, right? He realizes it's an underthrown ball, so he just casually takes the underneath positioning here. Just reads the play perfectly. Gets his hands up, tracks the ball very well. Easy. I and mean, th that's just simply, simply, well executed, very simple play. That's kind of what I'm going for there. Are they playing him in man? Yeah. Same thing there, just very tight coverage on the underneath route. So, one thing that you're going to notice here is he goes around this play. I'm guessing that most of that is because of the angle. And also, in a second, you'll probably... I'll back this up enough so we can see this. It looks like it's third... Yeah, see at the bottom of the bottom right of the screen, it's third down. So, his main job on this play is to prevent the first. And you're giving up a field goal regardless. It's overtime in college football. 
so his main goal here is to pre prevent them from getting the first down, or even worse, a touchdown. So he just takes the safer route to this and goes around the play to the outside. And he just forces him out of bounds with a little bit of help. And of course, they end up blocking the field goal and whatnot, and etc. So, uh, yeah. Oh, we have one more. Okay. Baker versus Missouri here. Shout out to the people who helped make this community what it is. Uh, Mark Jarvis, as well as, the, as well as the rest of the people who grind out the film and make these cuts for us. You guys are the best. Oh, man. And again, just an excellent job of enforcing the boundary here. He forces him to take the outside. A little bit overran, but no issue there. That's a nice comeback. Also, another thing that should be interesting about this tape is Drew Locke is the Missouri quarterback. So we'll get to see him versus another quality quarterback in addition to Baker. Nice job just wrapping him up. That's a beautiful fundamental tackle. He was down. But nice tackle. Nice job. Just let him take the short, easy completion. I can respect playing deep. Okay, calling out coverage. Again, leadership responsibilities there, which we should see even more of as a senior. Oh, that was beautiful. Beautiful job recognizing the slant play here. Is that false start? Oh, yeah, they're trying to blow it dead. Still, though, that's a nice job, Ashley. What you're going to see here is, bam, right there. He sees the receiver start to cut, so he starts to break down on the slant. Ex excellent route recognition. But at the same time, too, he recognizes that it's third and long, so he's still playing behind to avoid the receiver slipping behind him. And he's still forcing him to the underneath. That's excellent. Okay, stick to him. That was on the other half of the field. Really nice sticky coverage. Oh, wow, that is a very easy read on his part. So I actually didn't see what happened to the play. Did get back it down? Yeah, that's exactly what happened to it. Okay, so anyway, Baker here, what he's going to do is he sees this is hitch routes across the board. So he's just going to undercut this route. Okay, that's just simple. Simple, basic. Well, it's good. Nice 
Miss Shelby getting low center of gravity. You can kind of see him in the back of the, in the bottom corner there. This is very nice. Shadow sticking in covers. He was never technically down. Okay. Zone look, vertical. Do you read that and come down? Doesn't look like it. Just let the receiver take his outside and force the boundary. Force the boundary. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's just textbook right there. I and mean, there's, there's not really anything to say about that. Just look at this. I don't know who that throw was targeted to. My guess is it was to his receiver. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's doing such a nice show on this play. Tell, to be completely honest with you. That's just perfect defense. And that's what happens when you force the boundary, right? No chance of a completion. Nice shot of swooping underneath the block. Same thing here, he's just forcing the outside. Force the boundary. It's same thing. Same thing. What I love about this too is he's doing, he's doing this effectively and at a, a very elite level, to be honest with you, consistently. Every single time he's had the opportunity to force a boundary and get enforcing and completion out of bounds, he's doing that every single time. That is clutch. I mean, just look at this cup. Look how little room there is to pass this ball. He has everything underneath covered. Behind the, I mean, if you throw an inch behind him, that's out of bounds. And there's just no way that that receiver is going to catch the football because even if he does throw this in literally a perfect spot, Baker is still going to be right there to get his hands on the ball and force the deflection. I mean, there's like a zero percent chance that he can the football. Oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful. Third and two. He's just trying to force this underneath. Gets a little physical with him, which I love in short yardage. Just gets his hand right in between the receiver's hands and his body and knocks it right out. That is just textbook. Oh, that is so fundamentally sound. This dude reminds me of Marshawn Lattimore in so many ways. Zone look there. Third and two, short yardage again. Watch a hitch. Yep. Very nice. Another hitch route. Block shed. Block shed. Oh, that is nice. Okay. He at least forced him to run to the outside there and force the out of bounds. That's, that's a decent play. I wouldn't necessarily call it W, but he at least did enough. Zone look here. Again, doesn't get shot with slipping under the block. Can we draw? It's an interesting call on third and seven with Drew Locke, but okay.
Let's so look. Go to the opposite side. Oh, okay. Through it cross field. Right to Baker. I didn't know what he was doing there. Block that is. Again, just does a great job of cutting underneath. That was incomplete. So, um, there's three games for you guys. Uh, honestly, I was really impressed by uh, DeAndre Baker. Yeah, just ignore that, guys. That's not my phone. So, uh, things that I like about him are he is incredibly good at the fundamentals. Uh, he is very sound technically. Uh, and basically every single thing that you want to see from the corner. Uh, there was the one play where he didn't get his head around, where he forced an interception in the Tennessee game uh, on the deep ball, where he got his hand in there and whatnot. I, I want you guys to do that at the beginning. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I am very pleased to see uh, everything at this point. He does a great job of uh, breaking on routes and really nice job of limiting space on those comebacks, those quick outs, those things like that, those hitches. Um, does a great job of using his hands to get between the receiver's arms and the body and uh, knock balls away, get past deflections. Excellent job. Uh, does a great job of, uh, especially on deeper to intermediate routes, forcing the boundary. Uh, I've walked you guys through that so many times. There's so many evidences of that. Um, so much evidence of that, excuse me, on tape. Um, I mean, that's just incredible, elite level. Uh, skill. He does a nice job of protecting the sticks on third down, uh, making sure that he wins the, the backside leverage and forces the receiver underneath in front of the first down marker. I mean, there's just so many little details about him that overall add up to encompass a great player. Uh, so, I'm definitely a big fan of Baker uh, on 17 tape. I really hope he continues this kind of uh, skill and talent into his 18 tape and he shows us the same things this coming year because uh, if he does he's going to be a first round pick there's no doubt about that uh, he's already projected in the 20s I want to say uh, playoff team range I could honestly see him rising throughout the year my one concern is that he is only listed at 5'11 uh, but if he comes in the common measure 6 foot I mean that goes away uh, and even then, Marshawn Lattimore came in at 5'11", and honestly, they're very comparable at this point. I'm not sure if Baker's going to have that 4'3'5 speed that Lattimore does, uh, but he certainly has the quickness and the footwork to be able to keep up uh, with those routes that you want to see, and he has the ability to enforce the boundary uh, and the handwork uh, that you want to see on those deep balls and those bigger receivers. We saw him cover Mark Andrews in the, in the uh, Oklahoma game. And he did just fine with that. So, uh, honestly, I have no worries really about Baker going into next year. I will check his injury report for you guys uh, and see if he had any history of injuries last year. I don't believe he did. Uh... Ten tackles for floor. Goodness. Uh, playing all 15 games and starting 14. Yep, so he did not have any injury issues. Uh, in fact, he appeared in 11 games as a freshman. Uh, appeared in 12 and 16, so if he did have an injury that year, it was relatively minor. Recipient of the Gordon and Sharon Teal Football Scholarship. That's interesting. I wonder what that's for. Uh, he got it again in 2017. And he got the Tillman one in 15. So what is this Gordon and Sharon Teal?
actually let's show what is. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find it. Oh well. Anyway, uh, regardless of what it is, it sounds good. It's obviously an honor of some sort. So for him to get that two years in a row, I would definitely say that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah. Oh my god, he was only a three-star prospect. Well, shout out to the defensive coordinator, head coach, and DB's coach for Georgia. Because uh, for them to turn him into what amounts now to a, a guy that plays like a five-star, uh, <laughs> totally, um, in two years is incredible. So, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for joining us with this one. Definitely recommend keeping an eye on him as the season goes by. Uh, he's probably one of my favorite corners we've watched so far. I played him just ahead of Byron Murphy uh, for my corner one uh, so far. And, uh, yeah, I really am excited to see what he does this year. And uh, I wish him and the rest of these guys well. Again, a shout-out to Mark for the database and everyone that's contributed to that in the uh, Twitter chat. I uh, really appreciate all you guys do for us and the accessibility of these tapes. So, uh, yeah, for now, that will do it on this one. Uh, but hope to see you guys again soon. Uh, don't forget to check out our other videos as well. And, uh, yeah, hope to see you guys again later, but for now, peace out.